Okay, I haven't switched over to my phone. It is really humid out here. Like I'm, ugh. Anyway, um, I'm gonna walk over here and I'm gonna show you guys something that is another piece of the mystery. I flip this guy here and I grab onto that. Remember how the spindle on the other one was all wiggly? This one's tight, but this is also a wheel. So, I just want you to, to recognize that this is this is supposed to spin. Something's very seized up, like very, very much not correct. I, I don't know what is going on here. I don't know if maybe it's not the axles after all, because that other axle did have one CV joint on it that was tight, but I don't think it was tight enough to be bad. So I'm kind of wondering if maybe the front end noise I was hearing was actually this wheel bearing going, uh, and I need a new spindle up here. But I don't know. We're going to pull her apart and find out. The other option is, is that there is indeed something up here in this differential that is seized up tight, but I can actually spin that with the slop and the axle. So I don't think it's in the differential. And then look, that started spinning now. Can somebody explain that one to me? Are the, are the brakes locked up? No, the brakes aren't locked up. What in the heck do I have going on here? She's moving now, but won't move very far. Okay. Stand by. Oh, yes. I remember you, my old nemesis. It's like a repeat thing here. You do it. Clean it clean. Come out of there. Damn you. Got to get all of that junk out of there so that we can get the thing in there. Gonna blow on it again. <sighs> Did it work? Oh my gosh, it's it's much better than it was. Okay, <sighs> one more time, and then I'm coming here with oh that guy. Is it gonna go in this time? Nope. Uh, Got to take that off first because you can't quite get in. See the, you know. Can't quite get into it without that upper control arm being removed. So I guess that's what I'm doing now. It's so small. What are we at here? There we are. Come on. Oh, got it. One handed. Turn over. The, the wheels are just turning. They call this a castle nut because of the way that it is. Um, yeah, anyway, it came off. I just needed new both hands. It was right there. Um, it's really hard to do when this thing wants to, you know, do that. And yeah. Pressure is on and everything is very loud. Ah! It didn't come off. Why not? Try again. Ah! Well, crap. I guess that's down there now. That's that's, that's fine. It, I mean, it's off. So probably would have been better if I could have caught that. But yeah, it's okay. Full assessment of the damages. Inside of this spindle is. A wheel bearing that uh, does not spin. Ah, I'm trying to show you, but you just have to trust me. It's uh, it seems seized. <clears throat> that that's fine right there. We're just gonna leave that. So, new wheel bearing. This side CV shaft. I mean, maybe just like a tiny bit stiff, but. This side's nice and loose. Whoa, look at that. Yeah. So, prob probably okay, I guess. I don't know. Replace them while I have them out. Let's go price them out and see. Then, oh, LS. Okay. Um, this way. 
come over to this side. This CV shaft, nice and loose. Um, doesn't seem to have a bunch of slop in it. This side's really stiff though. So again, probably gonna price out replacing those. Uh, let's see, wheel bearings on this side. Um, Spinning-ish. Probably just, let's just go ahead and do those. Oh, sorry, I guess I'm not pointing the camera right. Yeah, they, I mean, they, nah, they're toast. So, wheel bearings both front end. This, however, is the part that is spooky to me. As I come in here and I can spin the uh, output splines very, very, very easily on this side. However, if I come over to this side, this side is not the same story. This side, those spliny boys will not spin at all. Like with everything I got putting into it, they're done. So you grab the input shaft here. It's kind of like the front drive line. Try to spin it and the transmission's in neutral and it's not in four wheel drive. So this should spin theoretically very easily, but it will not. So as I suspected, it is that boy right there. All this other stuff, you know, the wheel bearings and what else did I say? CV shafts, CV shafts would have been fine. Wheel bearings almost definitely needed to be done. Um, they would have eaten up the, this carrier right here on the CV shaft. The rate, it would eventually, they would seize up and then the races would spin on this and ruin that. Um, so we'll replace bearings. We're gonna price CV shafts. I already have the rebuild kit for this because my suspicion all along was that it was that. Um, but this suddenly became far more complicated and I've got to do a little bit of recon here to see how to even get this guy out. Obviously the input shaft's got to come, but I think that that pops out once you get the differential loose, which there's a mounting bolt there and one back there. And I guess what I'm trying to figure out is if it comes out the side or out the bottom. Because on the bottom, there's a skid plate. We can pull that skid plate off and maybe drop it out the bottom. But it also kind of looks like it'll fit out the side too, so. And if that's the case, then probably we'll have to take this control arm off. The bottom control arm can stay almost certainly because it won't be in the way, but this control arm will have to come off or the one on the other side which actually might be the case because of the way that the input shaft is. Let's go over here. I'm kind of thinking maybe it's gonna be on the other side here. Yeah, uh, watch out for the uh, hydraulic leak. Ooh. Okay, what do you guys think? Are we gonna get it out this side? Or is it gonna drop down? So it's really narrow and that thing's wider than that is narrow and I just feel like it's gonna come out this side. So I'm gonna work on getting this. Um, control arm removed and we'll figure out how to secure this boy um, we might zip tie it to something and get it out of the way but I'll get that control arm off and get the mounting bolts off for the differential and I will be back um, yeah, the rain hasn't slowed down at all it's a good thing we moved away from the coast because geez it'd be rainy otherwise yeah well we we still have we still have definitely uh, Christmas lights up because that's how we roll. But uh, yeah, glad I'm in the show. Okay, uh, control arm removed. Working on the mounting bolts. Hit it. Push that button first, there we go. Ready, bring the thunder. Oh, oh that, it, it came off. Cool. I need to get in there, please. You need to leave. Go away. Yeah, like right there is good. Okay. And you won't go on. Ah. Bring the thunder.
Okay, I'm um, taking a risk here. The lower bushing for the lower control arm is in the way of that mounting bolt right there. So I can't get to it with socket and ratchet. And it's actually really quite difficult to get to it even with this wobble dude. There's not enough clearance between the two to get in there with a wobble joint. I kind of almost feel like I have to take the lower control arm off, which isn't really that big of a deal, but my god. I would very much like to speak to somebody at Yamaha Motor Corporation customer service. I need to get that off, which is the bushing for the lower control arm, so that I can get to that bolt, so that I can remove this differential. And everything's going swimmingly. I've got both of the bolts loose. See that guy right there? And that guy right there. But then you get in here and you look at it, and you go, okay, I'm gonna take it out now. And, and it is on, that's the subframe for the front, which means that to actually take that control arm off, I've got to take the whole front of the four-wheeler off, which means that somebody at Yamaha is not doing their job. Like, all you had to do, literally, all you had to do is just put this bolt in from this side so that it would come right out, but, but you had to, why did, why? It's on the workbench. Um, took a little doing. Let me show you something. I did end up having to take the whole front off the four-wheeler. But yeah, there's a big hole right there where a uh, differential used to be, and it's now right there. So when I first took it off, I thought, hey, it's fine. It's, you know, this guy's spinning just fine and everything. And then this guy on this side, it's still got a lot of oil in it. Gross. Um, come on, help me out here. This guy on this side... Still not spinning, but I thought, hey, I'll spin it this way, and then you can see, maybe, I don't know, can you see? It's spinning when I spin the output shaft. If I could hold it still, it would be easier. But but then, I notice, and you can actually see it on the camera, I'm seeing it right now, that whole bearing is split. Like, I think literally it's like a spiral fracture all the way up through it. Um, I don't think it's supposed to be like that. So we're going to go ahead and pull this thing apart and see if we can figure out why it's like that and what we can do about it. Where to follow. Okay. So you got the cases on the differential split. Side one with the seal and the pinion gear. That all... Can't do it one-handed, but... There, see, trust me, it's spinning fine. So everything's fine there. Um, I will probably replace that seal since I have it. But I don't think I'm gonna mess with anything else there. And you come to this side and I think what I thought was a crack in this, and you can actually see it pretty good on the camera right now. If you look right here. I thought this was a crack on the inside of this. And as I'm playing with it and looking at it, it's actually too kind of perfect and uniform. If you watch how it just kind of spirals down into like a perfect gig. I don't think it's a crack. I actually think it's an oiling groove, which means that it's supposed to be there. It's so that the differential oil will get in because the output shaft or the front axle shaft front CV joints or whatever for a CV axle fits into this and I think that this groove is here so that it grabs oil <clears throat> and actually oils that so this bearing feels amazing I mean as you can see this just spins beautifully there's no play in it at all it I, I just don't think there's anything wrong with it I mean and look at the oil that was in it it's pretty Pretty clear, pretty outstanding. So the problem is not here. I took this spindle off, and when I did so, the bearings fell out of it. Um, 
I had the races for those bearings. It split in two and came out. So I went ahead and pulled the snap ring that's in there to hold these bearings in. And they kind of appear to have become one with this hub and spindle. So I'm going to go get a uh, seal puller. Possibly have to press them out. Not 100% sure what I'm going to do there. Um, but I'm going to try to get those out and get some new bearings coming for it. But the long and the short of it is that guy right there is not the problem. Um, I'm going to put him back together. The fact that that front right wheel, which is this output side, is the, also the one that's directly connected to the pinion at all times. Meaning if that wheel's spinning, the front propeller shaft is spinning coming out of the transmission. Um, I think that the next thing I've got to check is to see if maybe it was stuck like in four wheel drive because of shift fork bent or if there's something actually inside of the transmission of the four wheeler that's hosed or if it's just as simple as these wheel bearings um, were doing that but I don't know there's a part of me that fears this is becoming uh, far more complicated than just a simple differential rebuild though so we'll uh, keep digging into it and figure out what's going on all right it is time to press the second set of wheel bearings out of the hub so i've already done one of them so i have reasonable confidence that this is going to go just absolutely swimmingly and nothing's going to happen terrible you know horrible or or, or just you know completely atrocious or, and actually you can kind of see it's it's pressing through nicely so far so And once it pushes out the other side, this is what it's supposed to look like. See, that is the race on the inside of the spindle. And that's the boy that we pressed out of it. Which, as you can see, is no good. Because there's supposed to be balls and an inner bearing thing. And, and they're actually all right there. So I think it's safe to say that the uh, wheel bearings were bad and that may actually very well be the issue that we're having. So could have been that simple. I might have done a whole bunch of work for nothing, but I suppose we'll see. And so I spared you guys the inevitable explosion when that thing pressed all the way through and all that blew out the bottom. This bearing actually came out in one piece, which, um, come on, focus. That is the problem. So you can see, no matter how hard I attempt to spin, the inner part of the bearing will not turn independently from the outer part of the bearing. And, uh, well, that, that kind of is bad. So, probably the problem? I mean, that one went into a million pieces. This one has fused into one piece. Neither situation is optimal. So we're going to replace those bad boys. I think at that point we're going to go ahead and stitch everything back together, um, which uh, Lieutenant Dan there doesn't have any legs. Um, we're going to stitch it all back together and test it out and see if maybe it was literally as simple as wheel bearings, um, which I guess knock on wood, that'd be really nice if that's all it is. So, And we're back with the next installment of Lieutenant Dan's getting new legs. Um, it seems like this jack that I've got him jacked up on has settled over the last week. Yeah. Gonna need to jack that back up. In the meantime, look at what we got. Stuff and things. <clears throat> Including a new bearing that does the spinny thing like it's supposed to. So, we actually got four of these. Because they come in kits of four. Apparently they're the same on all four wheels. As far as I'm aware, the back wheels are okay. But, obviously, if the front wheels went out and had both gone bad, we probably at some point in time need to visit the rear wheels. 
I'm going to go ahead and get this boy jacked up and settled where he's supposed to be, and then we will take that guy right there and press it into the hub. See what happens. All right. In today's episode of Facebook, excuse me, in today's episode of gatekeeping on Facebook, um, you're doing it all wrong. <clears throat> so cleaned up the race with emery cloth on the inside, made it nice and clean. Um, kind of gave it a little uh, tappy tap, but this guy sits on top. You hit that part get it set and then I'll take it over to the press and press it the rest of the way in um, I'm sure that there'll be comments saying well that's not how I do it or I would have lubricated it first or whatever but this has worked for me and I guarantee you with 80% of the time it works all the time or whatever um, well hell let's go see okay well, the dog sits here and sniffs and licks my leg. Hi, Hank. We're going to put an uncomfortable amount of pressure on this and see if we can break something. Here we go. Oh, something happened. Is it going in? It do appear to be going in. Just like it's supposed to. It's like it was made that way. Like. It's made to go in there or something. So this jobber dude that I'm pushing it in with, that guy right there, it's just a little bit too big for the hole. I went ahead and oversized it just for this first push to make sure everything was gonna be okay. But now I'm going to put the right sized one on there and we'll set it the rest of the way in. Just like that. Sorry, I keep hitting the uh, camera with the jack handle. Let me move over here a little bit. How much pressure does it take to set this thing in the way that it's supposed to be set? Like that kind of that feels that feels about right. Let's see. Come on back up. All right, get out of now. Let's take you over to the workbench and see. Oh, oh it appears to be set. That's where it's supposed to be. And it still spins. Success! Now, we need to put this springy boy back in there. But as you can see, He's too big. So you use this guy to pinch him down and put him back in. And I seriously doubt I'm gonna be able to do it one-handed, but I'm gonna try and see if I can get this on video. And then if that doesn't work, why well, we'll uh, just do a, whatever. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, let's, uh, I'll be right. Much easier with two hands. You can see he's in now. He's in the groove all the way around. That hub is ready for reassembly. So we will do this one more time for now. Um, although eventually, maybe this winter, January, when I'm bored and I don't have anything else to do, I'll probably pull the back end off of it and do the same thing because the front two wheel bearings were toast. And so I can't imagine that the rear two are, uh, they've got the same amount of miles, the same amount of riding on them, so I would imagine they're on their way out too. But I'll go ahead and uh, get the other one pressed in, and then we'll start reassembling. Reassembly. So, this boy goes in there. I'm going to do this one-handed. It has, if you look at it, it's got like a little hog ring on it, which... It's kind of coming off here. Let me push it back on. But anyway, that little hog ring um, clicks it in place. So 
presumably we're going to push this in until it clicks into place. All right, the splines are lined up, or not. So we'll spin this until the splines line up good. There. It's in. That was all it took. So we've got this in. We'll clean this up a little bit. You can see that's got, uh, had a little heat on it. Because I don't think that bearing was spinning real well. But I think it'll be okay. Um, it's, you know, it's doing its thing the way that it should. So we're going to go ahead and slide the hub back on it. Which the hub is... I left it over on the workbench. Stand by. All right, I have the hub. Again, we're gonna do this one-handed, I think. Maybe, I don't know. We can. It's, it's gonna be fine. It, oh, see, that. look at that. It wasn't even hard. Well, maybe. There we go. And then we slide that into the upper ball joint and this into the lower ball joint. We'll just kind of let it sit there for right now because we're going to have to pull all this back together. We'll make sure that the steering, yep, the steering's all clear to get up into place. Nothing's in the way. The brake caliper can just, it can just stay there. Okay, I'm going to set the camera down for a second and put those two back together and get some bolts and, or some castle nuts and cotter pins on them. And then we will put that guy back on same thing castle nut cotter pin and then we'll worry about the uh, brake rotor and everything the uh, splines feed onto the brake load brake rotor right there um, I may actually hit those with a flapper wheel too because those are showing some wear and tear and then I got some new brake pads so I'll replace the brake pads while I'm in here so I'll be back in a minute 